Recently, a friend in one of the machine knitting groups that I enjoy showed us a picture of a booty similar to this one and asked if anybody knew how to make it. I've seen these around forever but never made one and I told her I'd give it a try and see what we could come up with and here it is. We'll start with some basic information about newborn foot sizes. In the U.S., size 1 is 3.5 inches long and 3.75 inches in circumference, and size 2, also considered newborn, is about a quarter inch bigger all around. So I'll be giving you information for size 1, but with what I just told you and some more information we'll cover, you will have enough knowledge to enlarge it to a size 2 or even up a little bit. This drawing is not to scale in order to fit on the screen well. The total length of the piece that we'll be knitting is 6.75 inches and we're going to use 7 stitches 10 rows per inch in a number 1 or number 2 yarn on a standard gauge machine. The specific instructions will be for that gauge and a size one. However, if you have drawn the schematic, you can draw it right onto your knit leader, knit tracer, knit radar, and knit it in any gauge. We'll knit from the bottom to the top of the diagram, casting on 12 stitches, knitting 17 rows, then casting on 11 additional stitches on each side for the next two rows, Knit straight until row 61 has been knitted, then work some decreases to shape the front area of the booty, and we will gather the stitches off. As we knit, I'll be calling out rows, but you can see that I've given you dimensions to work from if you choose to draw yourself a pattern. Row 38 is marked here because I have a theory I'll explain to you later that I haven't actually tried yet, but on with what we do know. For size 2, add a quarter inch of width and 3 eighths of an inch length. So add 2 stitches in 3 rows. If the 3 eighths of an inch seems odd to you when I said there's a quarter inch size difference, remember we fold the toe up. In stitches in rows, that's as close as we can get to a perfect quarter inch increase in size. Add the extra stitches here and the extra rows here. Okay, let's knit. Cast on 12 stitches in the center of the machine. I am e-wrapping with doubled yarn. That means that I won't have to weave in the yarn tail, and it will also reinforce the back of the ankle just a little bit. I don't think it matters too much about that reinforcement, but I like the idea of it. Now we're going to knit 17 rows. You may or may not need to put a claw weight on your work, depending on the machine. But since I don't want to be embarrassed in front of everybody with something going wrong, I'm going to do it. So 17 plain rows and we'll stop on the left. Now we need an additional 11 stitches placed into work. And the easiest way to do that is the double E-wrap, which you see me doing. Under two, back over, the, across the first one and into the hook of the one nearest the existing work. If this is not something that you know how to do and you didn't catch it from that quickie demonstration, that's okay. I have lots of cast on videos and I will link you to them in the program notes. I would like you to take note that going left to right, we make the letter E, the cursive letter E with the yarn. However, when casting on from right to left, my E's are actually backwards. I find that works better. After adding stitches, I also find that knitting the next row back from hold is helpful and then get weights on the new stitches if you need to do it and continue knitting straight until row 61 has been completed. Now decrease one stitch on each side using a two prong to tool so that the decrease actually occurs one stitch from the edge. And we will do that four times, knitting two rows in between each decrease. So row 61, 3, 5, and 7 are where we'll work decreases. Then we will knit one additional plain row and we'll be at row 68. 
The last row will take the carriage from left to right. Now, leaving a good long yarn tail, snip the yarn, thread it into a yarn needle, or I'm using my double eye needle, and work that needle through all of the live stitches. Stick the yarn needle into the fabric. Don't use it as a gathering thread yet. We will later, though. The front of the shoe is shaped by gathering everything above this point. It all ends up underneath our embellishment. First, let's create the heel by sewing these two areas to these two areas. For this design, the purl side of the fabric is the outside of the slipper. But at the top edge, we sew lace onto the edge of the fabric and then flip it outward. Therefore, for a little space at the top of the booty, the heel seam will show on the outside. So the best thing to do is sew most of the seam with the purl sides touching one another and sew it all the way up except for the top 3 eighths to half inch. I like to do this on the sewing machine so as to get nice tight stitching. That way the baby cannot get its fingers into them. So the purl side faces of the fabric touch each other for this distance while I sew. Then flip the fabric so that the knit sides touch each other for this little distance. Next we add lace. Pretend this diagram is looking down into the shoe. Here are the seams we just sewed. Place the lace so that it slightly overlaps the knit side of the fabric edge and sew a continuous piece of ruffled lace all the way around this edge. Half to three quarter inch wide lace is good. With the heel created and the lace sewn on, now we can gather up the toe area. These stitches are already on a gathering yarn, which emerges from the fabric here. Use small running stitches to stitch down to this spot, working very near the edge of the fabric. Now pull this whole area tight and secure it with a knot. Push the needle through the gathers and stitch down this side. Gather it in tightly too and knot the yarn. If you don't get perfect pleats automatically, you can adjust these areas with your fingertips until you do like the way they're laying down and then stitch in this area securely to keep them there. Then sew a button or some other cute embellishment over all that gathering and stitching. I'm not certain this is really necessary, but I'm going to put one double yarn, very secure stitch, and the position that I want the top edge of the booty to stay folded outward. It's not unsightly, and then I know it's going to stay exactly where I put it. Every time you sew something on to a garment made for an infant, booties in particular, because you know their favorite posture is bringing their feet up near their faces and playing with them, and they can worry off trim like crazy. I would be horrified if I were ever responsible for an incident where a child choked on the trim. With that in mind, I picked a button with a big, strong shank so as to be able to stitch through it many times. The photo my friend showed that inspired these booties had the gathered area covered with a satin bow and a pearl. Just adorable, but whatever you use, sew it really securely. This notation is an alternate method we might use to gather the toe. I haven't tried it yet, but it should work fine. Using this one, we would make an eyelet on stitch number two, counting from the edge after knitting row 38. Shape in the same way, but then bind off the final 26 stitches. To gather in the toe, we would anchor a gathering thread in one eyelet by just tying it around. Stitch around the edge all the way to the other eyelet. Gather in the toe and then do the rest of the finishing in the same manner that I already described. These are super quick and easy and only take maybe an ounce of yarn. Have fun with them.